Hey coach, so glad you found us on YouTube. Couple things, first of all, make sure you subscribe and like. Second thing is go check teachhoops at, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. It is a roadmap of someone that's done this for 30 plus years. Let me help you with that roadmap. I've already done it. I put pictures in my gym. Let me help you uh, spend less time, win more games. Go over and check out teachhoops.com. It is. It's a great world we live in. All right. Sorry, I couldn't get earlier. We had late practice. We don't have school right now, so I, we had late practice. And um, good, thank you for taking the time. No, I feel bad. I feel bad. Usually, I try to do them like early mornings and Sundays and stuff to, for people that aren't, you know, aren't like eight hours difference. But um, yeah, I think it's six hours for me because you're in the in the in the center of America. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so shoot away i watched a little bit of your tape that you sent me but i couldn't I, I, you didn't tell me which team you were oh uh, right the white the white uh uniform white uniforms okay all right I've just, I've just been watching the first 17 minutes of the game that i sent you okay because i realized i sent you a long you know, a long video yep and because it was a while ago too i wanted to refresh my mind so there's a few things so at three minutes uh Basically, we, we pressed from the start. Okay. Quite badly. Um, there, were some, we, there were some holes. There were definitely some holes. <laughs> and we, despite the sort of bad formation of the press, the fact they were playing the whole uh, full length of the court, they maybe forced a few sloppy turnovers. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't convert those turnovers. Right. Um, you'll see at four minutes, there's... Oh, sorry, at three minutes 43, you'll see like a stack inbound play. Yeah. A really weak finish. Yep. Um, it's 343 with a white team. Um, Hold on, I'm pulling it up here. So let me. Um, Hold on. So I just I just took a few minute stamps that I thought I could quickly share with you over the next five, yep. 10 minutes. Yeah, go ahead. I think you can share on the bottom. Oh, I think you can share with me. I can pull it up, but I think you can do the same with me. I think I set it up so you could share. Do you have Do you have things on the bottom of your screen? Yeah, there's a share button. Yep. So if you share, it will take you. It will take me to your desktop, and then you can put it up, and I can see it. Then there you go. Perfect. Oh, nice. Isn't that nice? Okay. Yeah, so, that's. I, I know. I didn't mind doing Google Hangouts, but I know how Zoom works, so it's just easier for me to kind of manipulate people a little bit better. All right. Yeah. So, so you're, you're white uniforms. So we're white uniforms. This is a, in England, this is the National um, Youth League. Okay. We're divided into regions at National League. So this is um, Premier Central. So it covers part of London, okay. uh, part of, which is northeast of London, and, and, and over to the west, Bristol near Wales, and then further north uh, to Leicester, which is a big uh, academy in England. Boston. okay so yeah so i took a few things so first of all uh 343 let's go here so 343 this yep. is a tech. okay I'm just gonna rewind okay all right so so you what are you running have, for? i watched the first 10 minutes of this and we definitely had this sort of like one pass one shot yep so you'll see here we get the baseline inbound. Okay. And the the idea of the stack is the the front two just split. Yep. So you see the uh, the guard coming towards uh, the the camera. Yep. And and I think they're moving. I think they're actually the, even uh, moving before the ball. I think they're moving before the ball's even handed to them. And then the two and then the two bigger guys at the back. They're just setting a back screen. So the the guy at the very back should get the ball. Okay. So he comes down and he should get it there. Right. But then he, he gets it too low and he puts up a horrible attempt. A horrible attempt. <laughs> so it doesn't work. So, so the, play, the, the play sort of works, but it doesn't, he doesn't finish and he catches well, I, it. Yeah, I think the play is, is simple, but I think simple. Did you get work. that? Yeah. So um, I, if, you, oh, sorry, if you... I think I lost your sound for a bit. The, can you hear me now? Yeah, sorry. I, I lost your sound. Sorry. Okay. So... I think if you pause this for a second, um, if you go back, they were moving before the ball was even handed. 
Yeah, right. They, they, as in, they start the action. They start the action. They want to wait until the ball's handed to the to them before they start their action. Yeah, and and then he's got to know where. I mean, so watch. He's not even handing him the ball, and the bottom, the front guard there's already moving. So yeah. if you look at the official here, he's already handed handed. He he hasn't even handed him the ball yet, and he and this bottom guy is moving. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So. So that even – so those guys weren't even – I mean, they did suck their defenders out. But yeah. – and then this – I mean, you got to know where you are. That that He's got a jump stop. I'd rather have him shoot a two-footer than – you know, he's, he's never going to make this shot ever. I mean – No. Yeah. <laughs> so so this this out-of-bounds play is all about timing. So I would do – I would do it in practice with no defenders. Okay. And just you be the official and say, okay, ready, Go. So that you get, because this is really a timing play. Because yeah. if these two can shoot, they're going to suck them out. And then basically you're playing two on two at that point. One of those guys should be open if they're in man for sure. Yeah. Yeah. This is man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just taking notes on my phone as well. Just That's okay. Help. Yeah. I can send you this too. Um, um, so that's, yeah. So th these are just a few little things. So 349. Yep. We, we had quite a lot of turnovers ourselves. Here's one of them. Oh wait, that's not it. Hold on. Uh, no. Oh, sorry, that's us. That's us getting a turnover. Yep. Yeah. So you turn them over. You turn them over, and then for four minutes, they attempt a sideline, a sideline stack, which is another thing they've worked on. Yep. Uh, and the idea, they, I don't think they get this right. The idea is that number fifteen, the uh, can you see my arrow? I can. So this guy uh, would screen for this guy. Okay. He dived to the basket. Yeah. And then, the, and, then and, and one of these, uh, I think he fakes away, and then this guy screens for him, and basically he gives the ball, and then and then basically this guy. So the two screeners open up for the basket. This guy here dives to the basket. Yep. I'll just play and see what they do. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, it doesn't really. <laughs> it so, doesn't really so, so I would show them that there, there's no, I mean, if it's an interchange, that's fine, but there's no contact there at all. If they're supposed yeah. to be screening, there's no contact. So yeah. don't, don't assume that they can screen. They know what a, <laughs> don't assume that they know how to screen at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Like here's how you, you can't, you can't, you know, here's how you set the screen. Here's how you come off the screen. Yeah. So don't, don't assume that they can, because otherwise it's just going to be interchanges like that. Because they'll always take the shortcut. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you go to – so here it is again at 11.04. Uh, and I, 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 that's really good advice because it looks like they're just moving into position rather than screening. Right. They're, the problem is – and I've, I've noticed this at all levels. They start being robots. Hit pause for a second. They start being robots because you told – coach told me I had to go from here to here, and that's all they're trying to do. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I'd rather have three of you setting good screens so at least we can get open. Because when we play better teams, if we do interchange, we're never going to get the ball in. Yeah. Um, okay. So on this one, they've lined up not in the ideal spot because the, the guards are in the middle. But 15, the nearest guy here. Right. He's between this guy who's hidden by number 13 blue. Yep. Uh, let's see if they do that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he already moves. He already moves. Right. He doesn't even get up there. You see, he, he, he goes to screen. It's too late. It's too late. He does get the ball, but then right. he goes and does this and turns it over. <laughs> right. Nearly, and nearly he, he turns it over, and, 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 and the first thing is a jump pass is a horrible pass. Yeah, yeah, okay. Like, I just was yelling at my guys an hour ago about jump passes because the problem with the jump pass is you've committed yourself. Um, yeah. You know, and that's and, and against better teams, if you can, you're not, you don't have a hang time of LeBron James, you know, so yeah. <laughs> and it's a little different, and you don't have those angles at all. Yeah. Um, one of our problems in this game was well, on every game is one pass, one shot. I think this one went in. We have it, the point guard comes down. I mean, he was yep. sagging off. Yeah. But then. Uh, that, and that's a rare sighting. You just saw a Chelmsford line three pointer. Right. So, so I would at some point, if you have time, even if it's in front of a computer, I'd sit down with all of them and say, okay, let. 
So this is where that ranking system comes in. Because if they're taking one pass, one shot, you're going to lose. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. um, unless you're really good shooting. I mean, it's just, that's just not going to happen. So go yeah. through and have, you know, let's do it as a group so they can all hear it. What kind of shot was that? All right, yeah. write it down. Let's talk. Is it a, you know, is it a, you know, a, 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 you know, I go from one to 10, you know, I tend to use odd numbers, but, you know, nine and tens are rare. You know, a lot of these are ones and threes yeah. <laughs> because they're not, you can get a better shot than that. Um, yeah. uh, just written that down. Oh, there's some really uh, poor box outs. So 736, they get a lot of second chance. So we start this sort of half-hearted press. Yeah. And then we get lazy. Jump pass. Yeah, there's another. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, good spot. And then you'll see here, there's a, they just get the rebound, put it back. There's no real. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I well, guess we're. And, I, and, I, and what age is this again? 14-year-olds uh, and 15. Oh, years. God, that's a tough age. Um, yeah. I have one living in my house right now. And yeah, <laughs> anyway, so. um. They're trying to trap there. And then, they're trying. They're just, so, again, if you rewind on that, I'd give that like a three on a trap. Um, what do you, sorry, what do you mean by I'd that? I'd give it like a three if I was going from one to ten. Oh, right. So, so rewind, right set, rewind a little bit, first of all. Let's kick this. Let's deal with this problem first. So, watch. So this, this guy who play. you're about to mention it was the same guy that did the jump pass earlier. Yep, but watch what happens after he does a jump pass. Okay. So here's my issue with this. If I'm if I'm if I'm coaching this team, I think the jump pass is just coming up. Yeah, he he gets in the it's lane right here. Okay, so fine, stop, hit pause. So I have no problem. Kids make you make a mistake. The problem, yeah. and this is like a life lesson. The problem is you made a mistake. Now, just rewind like six seconds here, and you made a mistake. No problem. Don't compound one mistake by another mistake. Like. Don't compound going out to the tub, to the pub or the bar and drinking too much and then getting in a car. You, so he right. makes a mistake. Now watch his watch watch everything that happens after he makes this mistake. So he throws it. Now watch him. All uh, right. Head. Yeah, I'm done. He's not even part of the team. He it, it takes him four seconds to recover to get back down. My object with this, and I point this out to my players. My point is, okay, you're the last one down the court and you just made a mistake. I understand you make, I'm not mad about the mistake. I'm mad about the reaction to the mistake. Right. <laughs> so you made the mistake. You should be the first, you should be sprinting down trying to help your teammates at that point. And that was their first, that's seven minutes, 29. And that was their first bucket. Cause we'd actually, we, we'd create a lot of turnovers, but we couldn't score. Right. That, yeah. That was quite significant. And you just basically gave them life then. It's like, <laughs> we played a team a couple weeks ago and it's like, we're we're on a we're so we were so much better and we were down at half and it's like i told him i said because you gave them opportunities you gave them life don't give them life you have right, to right. defensively you have to do that much so that's fine i mean he's a 14 year old whatever he made a mistake but then sprint down and don't let, let's not compound it by making a second mistake i also uh, thought i also thought he had he had the lane you see. yeah yeah he might have the lane if he jump stops too he might even have a little floater at that point he gets in, yep. he just uh, he gets here. He gets here. Jump stop. Right. Jump stop, peek at the basket, jump stop, peek, and then go. Yeah. But and and and, and here's what I would do, especially because you're dealing with a 14 15 and all I go, okay, here's the issue. You, yeah. you you had a lane. I love that you were so you want to give him a positive before you showed the negative. It's like, hey, you were being unselfish. I personally think you probably had a shot at that point. You're two feet from the basket. You could have jump stopped, maybe gone to the free throw line, and you were being an unselfish player. That's great. You know, I, I like that. I don't like the jump pass, but I love, love that you were looking for your teammate. But, and then comma, but, watch what happens after you make the mistake. And then, because then they'll hear you. If you give them that little positive, then they'll hear the negative afterwards. Yeah. I guess um, I could bring my laptop to practice and just sit on the bench with some players. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. And and the thing is, if you have like, you know, you maybe you pull this kid over and you show him two positives and then you show him this one right. <laughs> and you have it labeled, you you know, you've watched it and you go, OK, I can do this in three minutes. I'm going to show you a couple couple clips, you know, 248, 862. And so you have it on a piece of paper. I used to do that before I 
you know, could do the editing and all that kind of stuff. And then I would just pull them over and I'd have it all queued up for them. Boom, boom, boom. And I'd show them and then you can pull the next kid over. Um, That's great. Yeah. And the, yeah. and the thing is, especially at this age, you don't necessarily want to do it in front of a group because embarrassment is, they don't, no one at this age wants to be pointed out in front of peers at all. But if you're showing them and you're just, Hey, I'm trying to make you better. Do you agree? Look at this da da da, da kind of thing. Yeah, okay. and then you do it with each one of them, and then parents will love that because you're you're helping them. You're trying to make them. It's no different than me handing back an algebra test and going over the here's what you did well and here's what you didn't do well. Sure, wow. sure. Yeah. Now that that particular kid um, ended up scoring the winning basket. <laughs> well, that's great. So so you show them that you start with that. Yes. You start yeah. with that one. Yeah. But he's uh, youngest. Uh, there's 14 year olds and there's 15 year olds, and he's in the 14 year olds. Yeah. Uh, there's just a few other things, so okay. Um, you can probably see my notes, right? So, you can, uh, <laughs> so 746. This this is our starting point guard. Okay. He's, he's he can't shoot, but he, he does. There, there he is. He does manage to get into the lane quite well. So here he draws a foul. No, he doesn't draw a foul. He just gets a layup. Okay. Okay, so first of all, that's going to catch up with him what he just did there because he was over dribbling, to be honest with you. When you play yeah. better opponents, that ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that sham gog, all that stuff isn't going to work when you play better players. So he's, he, he's a better ball handler than they are defenders at this point, so it works. Um, he can't shoot. You said he can't shoot. That's great. But does he look at the basket to shoot? Right. I That's see. the key is you, you so the, the other team doesn't know that he can't shoot. <laughs> right. So even though he's running the offense, he should always look like he's gonna shoot. Um because okay. especially if he's a good ball handler, if he's got to make them make come out on him. He's got to be a threat. Um, so you just keep reiterating, hey, look at the basket, shot fake, peak, look at the rim. Um even though he can't, maybe we you you definitely want to do that because then he can go around. I mean, he could hit a three. It's just right. Not really, yeah. yeah. Most of these kids. Could yeah, my dad's eighty-five. He could hit a three too. You know, it, it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen one. Uh, that's that's good advice. So I remember we had a game uh, in December where he uh, was attacking really well and getting to the line. Yep. No, they switched to a two-three zone, and he just had nothing. He had nothing. Right, but he, but they don't know that. I mean, maybe they do, but they, not all of them do. You know, and all it takes is for him to hit one jumper, and they're going to come out on him, and then he's going to have space to create what he needs to create. Right. Okay. And then the, again, you'll see they're half-heartedly trying to press. He scored. Right. They've all turned their backs, um, and then he, he's he tries to show him to the side. And then the wing here, sort of, sort of coming up with him. Yeah, he puts his hand up. Um, so, just... so go back to that rewind, like twelve seconds. So, yeah. I, I, I'd give this, I'd give this trap, like a, like I said, a three or four. So go to the trap. So they need to realize that the trap is for their teammates. So he's jumping. As soon as he jumps, I, that's exactly what I want to do if someone's trapping me. Because as soon as you're airborne, I'm going to go around you, pass around you. Yeah. So I can. I mean, you can find tape, but you're gonna when you when you press, it's it's not stealing the ball on the trap. Most of the kids think we're trapping. I'm going to get the ball. No, you're going to trap, and the other guys are going to get the ball. <laughs> Um, right. cause it's, it's on the steals where most of the turnovers come when you're trapping. Um, yeah. so your, your objective is to make that his pass as hard as possible. So your other three teammates can read lanes and eyes and where guys are cutting and try to get the steal at that point, because that guy yeah. only has three lanes to pass, right? He has, the, he, he got just trapped past half court so he can pass this officially ain't hustling too much, but anyway, uh, the, he can pass sideline, he can pass to the middle, or he can pass back. He can't go behind him at this point, no. right? Yeah. So the trap area is really good. So the three defenders have to take those three lanes away, make right. him pass it. You know, he can't throw that to the to the bottom, you know, bottom part of the court. It's not going to work. 
yeah and i think because i i usually teach and maybe tell me if this is right that they should have two in, uh, two trapping two intercepting and one sort of protecting slash intercepting i don't know what you think about that so say that again so uh on the one two one one or yep. whatever if it's a man whatever uh, when they trap in those corners, like you said, yep. you ha then have um, two sort of intercepting, sort of like trying to, like in the passing lane, denying them. One. I'd, have, I'd, have th I'd have three. I'd have one on the baseline, one in the middle, and one on the sideline, or one at, toward the middle of half court. So it's a three prong thing, right? So okay. if I'm getting. Here, hold on. The three intercepting. Yeah, hold on. So if I'm. Um, so we're here. I'm going to do this real fast. I don't have my drawer out, but I'm trapping here, right? So I'm trapping in half court. I want to take this spot away. I want to take this spot away. And I want to take this spot away. There's always, that's why people trap in the corners. And that's why they trap. Um, because basically there's three angles. You have to take those away. If you get a good trap here, what I'm circling, they can't no, see no, any. Can't they can't see, see anything else. I can't see what you're. You can't see it. No. I don't know um. Why. why am I not? Hold on. Maybe you have to unstop your share. Oh yeah, I can see it now. You can yeah. see it now. Okay, so so it gets past half court. So the X is the guy with the ball, and the yeah. two circles are the guys trapping. Should be the other way around, but um. So you always want to take three lanes away. So any anything over in um. Anything over in this, you know, in here or in here or in here, anywhere over in those spots is not a problem if you get a good trap because they won't see it. Okay. So you always want to take three angles away. If you're trapping, go for it, is my opinion. If you're only putting two guys in a safety, you're really not trapping. You'll get some turnovers, but if you want to go at them, and it's the same in the other corner. If I go, you know, if I trap – and again, I don't have my drawer out, so these drawings aren't very good. But if I trap down here with these two guys, then what are the three things I got? I got to take three angles away: that angle, that angle, and that angle. That's all. Right. Those are the three intercepting angles. Make them throw the lobby pass all the way to the other side. Right. Okay. So I always talk about angles because these are the guys that are going to get the steals at that point. Um, so you don't think you need a protector? I don't. If you're going to go, go, go. Yeah, yeah go. <laughs> I think that would help us a lot, actually. Yeah, and, and that's, and that, I, that's, the, that's here, you can share the screen back again. Um, that's the issue with um, you got to talk to them about this is why we're doing it. You, again, you're dealing with 14 and 15-year-olds. You got to feed on their egos a little bit. We're trapping. You guys are going to get layups. You know, you got to give them something. We're doing this so you get this. <laughs> um right. so pl play on their egos play on their hate to say it but you almost have to play on their selfishness a little bit like hey we're trapping that means you get layups we win you know kind of thing but that trap was just you know as soon as he's jumping it's like don't jump just get get those feet intertwined good trap get high hands and let your your friends are the ones that are going to get the steals yeah and then you might get a layup because they're going to get the steal, and then you're you're right there at the trap. You get the you get the sprint to the other end. Right. Okay. That's the um, eagerness of like, the, it's the excitement of it. I guess they they think they're going to steal the ball. Or... Right. And that and the, most of the time they're going to get fouls rather than the steal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was seventeen. So at this point, two. We, I think I called a timeout, but there's two subs have come on. Okay. Uh, the guy on the left and. The small guy under the basket. Yep. Uh, I think this was slightly better ball movement. I'm, I'm talking relatively here. I just want to check. This was the last. They scored. That was pretty bad. And then, because I really, I really want to focus on um, ball movement. Right. Spacing yeah, yeah. and ball movement is the key to a good offense. Spacing exactly. and ball movement. The thing is, every time they catch it. Yeah, it's a miss. That's a that's a decent shot though. So every time, so all every time those guys grab it, they should look at the basket. They should slow, and I call it peak. They should peek at the basket every time, because okay. it draws the defender toward them. 
they'll see cutters, they'll see movers, they'll see everything. You should, whenever you catch the ball, the first thing you should do is peek at the basket. So watch when they grab it here. He's not a threat. He's not a threat. So he grabbed and put it at his waist. He, he wasn't a threat. Every time you grab, so this is something you have to work on with them. It has to become a habit. Right. This kid catches it and he's a threat, right? He's putting it right in his pocket. Right. Even okay. if you're not going to shoot it, every time you grab it, you should look at the rim and you should be a threat because it okay. forces the defense to come out and defend you. Sure, sure. Okay. And it will help with your spacing and it will, you know, movement and spacing are the keys to any offense. Doesn't matter if you run dribble drive, read and react, swing, motion, whatever you run, okay. spacing and time and, and, and yeah movement are the keys if you're not moving it's you're easy to defend and if you don't have spacing again you're not you're, you are easy to defend right okay and then the game uh is, is um they go on this huge run i can't oh wait i can't okay so what did you do to try to stop the run uh, what did i do to stop the run i think i made some changes to like personnel personnel yep what else what do I, do? I would have changed. So the way you stop runs is there's a couple ways. Yeah. Personnel is perfect. Second thing yeah. is you change what you're doing offensively and or defensively. Okay. Third thing is you want to get to the free throw line <laughs> and yeah. stop shooting three pointers and jumpers. Okay. Um, you see, so you want to, you, you, the way you stop runs is you got to score. Um, so we refer to it. You can either do it. Stop, score, stop, or score, stop, score. Um, yeah. I tend to use it to stop, score, stop. If you do that three or four times, you'll stop any run, right? If you stop them and you score and you stop them, yeah. do that a couple times, you're going to run. So, you, again, you're making it like um, snack size for the, for the boys to remember. But um, when, if you go back and look at the run, my guess is the, you did some things defensively and you probably took some shots that were suspect or long ones. Right. Um, you probably weren't shooting a lot of free throws. So you, you stop runs by changing things offensively, defensively, personnel, or by attacking the rim and getting to the free throw line. Getting easy baskets at the rim is how you stop runs. Um, okay. yeah, that's so, so when you go back and watch that stretch, you know, ask yourself, did I, well, I change personnel? Could I have changed our defense? Could I have gone from a man to a 2-3 or something? Or, you know, could we have done something where I got my guard, my little point guard dribbling the basket so he goes to the free throw line? Our 2 3 is really bad. It's probably <laughs> the worst I've ever seen because despite whatever I say, they just, they just fall back. They become really inactive. They're like really, they sag Sorry really about that. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I was just saying, uh, I've tried 2 3. I've taught the 2 3 how I believe it should be taught, and I've studied up on it. and I try and trap on the I try and trap on the block, right? And then in the corner, and then everyone shifts over. Okay. But we we have such a stagnant, hands down, sagging deep two three. We, we just invite free throws and baskets. And okay, so hold on. So repeat what you said in the last about thirty seconds. I just had to turn my mic off and yell at my son to bring the so, dog inside. So yeah. say it again. <laughs> so I've we we tend to play man half court. Okay. We, and we've, we've, this season we've tried to press as I told you, you know, it hasn't been great but I want to work on it but when we play a 2-3 zone if, it's just terrible yep. so, so, so I wouldn't run it anymore I'd, I'd scrap it if it's terrible at this point in the season I'd scrap it and I would just play man I think that's better for them as basketball players in their future but then I would have tweaks to your man like maybe we're having a switching man maybe we're having a pack line or a sagging man where we're not going to give up anything in the paint, but we're going to give you threes with a closed out hand. Maybe we're going to trap in the corner, man. So I would tank if you don't have enough time to teach him the two, three, probably. So I'd tank it. That's fine. Man's our, man's our foundation, but then I would tweak off of that man. Um, so, you, yeah. so again, going back to stopping those runs, maybe we go from switching man to non-switching man or whatever it is. I don't know your personnel well enough, but that's what I would, I would simplify in that stretch um, and even run man in the full court. Don't worry about a zone press. Worry about man press. We'll just run and jump. We'll run and take angles away. Um, so I would okay. simplify. 
Hey coach, so glad you found us on YouTube. Couple things, first of all, make sure you subscribe and like. Second thing is go check teach hoops at, check out teachhoops.com for coaches who wanna get better. It is a roadmap of someone that's done this for 30 plus years. Let me help you with that roadmap. I've already done it, I put pictures in my gym. Let me help you uh, spend less time, win more games. Go over and check out teachhoops.com. Five. At this point, because you're halfway through your season, probably that's what I would do. Yeah, we are. They, they've also run a one-three-one, and the reason for that is I didn't want to overcomplicate it. It's because a team, a team beat us with a one-three-one, and so I, I wanted to teach them how to attack it. Yep. So therefore, they were playing defense as well. Yep. So that's a good. That's a that's a great thing. We 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 did that. We did that yesterday and the day before too. Some we're playing a team tomorrow. Some of the stuff they do, it's like, all right, well, we'll put that. We 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 have to work on it anyway. So that's a that's a good thing. One three one's an easy one. The only problem with one three one is rebounding a little bit sometimes. And on a one three one, uh, how do you deal with rebounding? You have everyone. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Yeah, because you tend to have a small guy in the bottom, so you're yeah. going to need those wings to go to the boards hard. Yeah. So we we. We do the one three one, and do you, would we have tried that a few times, and it's created like when we need something like a bit of energy. Yep, it just mixes it up, and we trap. We do just like a soft trap on the wings, and then a, a more significant trap in the corners. So yep, I trap in the corner. Then you trap in the corner with here. Um, so stop okay. your share for a second. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, Again, I apologize for my drawings, but I don't have my thing out. Um, so I was literally running in the door from practice. Uh, so the easiest thing, so the drops on a one three one are super easy initially. Um, let's do this one. And do you go the half half court or three? Um, I do it. I well, we do it both. We extend it, but anyway, let me draw it down here. So if you do it in the half court, half court's probably the easiest. I tend to put my my point guard on the bottom. I tend to put my athletic wing up here. Let's put three. I always put my five in the middle, and then two and four. So, um, so the way it works is that you wanted to trap in the corner. You said, yeah, and we sometimes sort of set a soft trap in the wing as well on the wing. in the wing. So what I do is I tell two and three. I let three decide when we're going to trap high, and he yells go, and then he'll just go. Um, but anyway, when the ball is on this side, four should be sinking. When the ball is on this side, when the ball is on four side, then two is sinking. But anyway, so if I um, – let me get rid of that. So, so he's going to the weak side elbow. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So, the, so five five's – win- one works baseline to baseline. Yeah. Yep. Five works – Five works a triangle from low block to low block to where he is right there, but he must front. So let's say the ball is, let me put where most people run a two, one, two. Okay. So let's say, let's say the X on top has the ball. Let's say X one has the ball and passes it to X three. Mm-hmm. So two and one are going to trap. Okay. Yeah. Five front five isn't responsible for the low block. Because that's where three wants to pass it. So yep. five has to front there. Three yep. sits in the elbow. Yeah. And four is down as low. I was yelling at one of my guys today. Low is the lowest. So he's got he's to guard two guys. So he's got to get low because it's easier to see people in front of you than behind you. So well, he, he so he's. That X. Yeah. What? He, he can't be higher than the weak side X. Yes. Yes, the one right here, this one. Yep. So he's just got to get low, and then he's got to read. The, the pass at three will probably make it to the is opposite high. So he's just got to read that 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 window. But he's got to – so as the ball is on this side, four is sinking. If the ball is over here with X2, then two is sinking. So two is kind of on this back back and forth, and same as four is. Five just has this little triangle right here. That's all five has to do. One has this baseline. And three is the kid that's just kind of, he's your steel kid. I tell him take high post and then read eyes. Because 
if if three can't pass to the low block, then three is going to look to pass it back out to one. And this right. is the one you're going to step in and get the steal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I have, I have a uh, men's team in the local like, rec sort of league, local league. Yep. And they, they play a one three one And the guy at the top, he gets so many fast break uh, buckets. Right. He's still, he's, he's a really quick athletic guy and he's off. Yep, and it's super athletic, kid that anticipates, kid that would run secondary in, a, like, American football. Yes, it's in, in, but I tell him to don't go for the steal right away. Sit at the elbow and watch. You got to watch. Okay, that's really helpful. I've, I've screen grabbed there. Okay. Yeah, yeah thank you. And yeah. then um, one of the hardest things to teach English uh, players is because you teach them the zone, and then you realize they've got to leave their zone depending on where the ball is which confuses if that makes sense so. right that's why i'd stick with the man i'd stick with teach him the man principles teach him the help side that's yeah. the easiest way to go i think okay and then so that was it for the video really i mean i had a few questions okay go ahead you got any more time or... yeah absolutely you're the one that's up late shoot i haven't even eaten dinner yet oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's, make, no, it's only five o'clock. The dogs have eaten, but I haven't eaten. It's only five o'clock. I, it's not even close to dinner time. Fish tacos today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I don't know if you can see my screen. No, I see their basketball screen. Yes. All oh, right. So you're not actually seeing my desktop screen. No. So you can close this out. Okay. Now, if you share, you can be able. You should be able to share your desktop. Oh. So if you hit share, there's going to be little, little boxes of different things. There you go. Yep. Oh, yeah. So these are my, some things I was just jotting down. Okay. Last uh, so it's, uh, you know, like I said in my emails, I'm, I'm still uh, new to the game. I've been doing this for three or four years. Yep. And, you know, I'm just, I love it. I'm, I read every train journey to work. And, you know, I'm obviously joining the teach hoops thing. Yep. And, Meet, meeting other professional teams and so a lot of this is new to me i'm trying to uh, be the best i can but things like timeout strategy okay i'm still so, learning so the more. first question is motivating if you figure out number one you'll be really rich but <laughs> yes <that's right. laughs> i mean but but this is somebody that's done it for 30 years so the motivating part you you have to start thinking because and this is why same i think sometimes same gender has an easier i mean i think i have an easier gig coaching boys and I would teaching girls because I know what a 14 year old and 15 year old boy kind of thinks about. Yeah, so when you're yeah. motivating them, you have to think back to when you were 14 and 15 and okay. you know, things <laughs> you, 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 you have to try to get into their shoes about what motivates them. You know, what, what, what pride, all that kind of, that's how I think you can motivate. It says, how do you motivate players? Well, you have to look at the age they're at, what, What's driving them? Is it their phones? Is it their girls? Is it the school? Is it winning? Is it playing? Is it, you know, that's how you motivate, I think. Um, so the problem I have with that is that it seems that their motivation is basically minutes and looking great, scoring loads of points. And It is. It is. 12 players I have, and I rotate about nine, to be honest. Right. So, but yeah, that's good. But yeah, I need to think about that. Uh, you need to think. You need to think about yes. We, I mean, that's a long. That's like an hour discussion. But um, it's like the, so timeout strategy. So, what specifically about timeouts? I mean, I I I go with my gut. Like I call them when we when they're going on a run or when I think my players need a rest. If I've only got a few players or I yep. I want I want to try something new. But I don't really know if I'm doing it right or. You know. So why you, the question you have to ask yourself is why you're taking the time out. Um, yeah. You know, you want to take time. I, I love, I mean, I'm going to someday die with lots of timeouts left because I like them to fight through it, but I'm also dealing with older boys a little bit. But um, so the timeout strategy, I think you got to have a plan for why you're calling the timeout. So usually I use it to try to stop runs. So if I feel the momentum shifting, um, and then I let I leave them alone. So if it's a full timeout, I leave them alone for 15, 20 seconds. I tell them to sprint over, get a drink, and sit. Because then I gather my thoughts. And, and you're by yourself probably. So you have to figure out what do you – they're only going to remember one or two things from your timeout. Yeah. So I use timeouts for change. Like 
they're in a run. So we're in man, we're going to go to zone, vice versa. We're going to call a special. We're going to, I, you got to convince them, okay, they are on a run. I took the time out, but now here's how we're going to counter it. <laughs> so again, you're playing kind of psychological warfare with your boys, but it's, you know, you got to convince them. I took the time out so we could do this. Um, and that's why things are going to change. So, um, and, but I would keep it, I, the coaches talk too much in timeouts <laughs> and they give too much information. So it's, if you have four things you want to say, say it in two things, cause that's all they're going to remember. Okay. Um, I, I loved a podcast you did recently. It was on, um, uh, mid, uh, half time speeches and end of game speeches. Yeah. And I, I took a lot from that podcast because I've been known to sit down and talk quite a lot at the end of a game. And you said something about, they're not going to remember anything at the end of a game. Zero. Yeah. Remember a couple of things in a timeout. And so I'm trying to do that. And then I'm trying to do it in practice. So in practice, I'm going to write just one or two things to focus on. Yep. Uh, and, and, I, and to be honest with you, I, especially early in my career, I practice timeouts. Like okay. practice them in a game in, in, in practice them during practice, you know, take five timeouts during practice. They'll, the kids will like it. They get a minute break. They get some water, but then you get to practice. Okay, here's what's going on, guys. Blah, 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 blah. You know, you don't have to even tell them you're doing it, but just kind of psychologically, it's good. Um, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, you know, again, it's going to be um, what I do, especially with younger kids, is during the timeouts, I'll ask them, okay, what are, our, what, are the, what are the things we need to remember as they're leaving? I'll call on John. John, what's our, what's our, what's the key for, what are we doing? What are we doing? And they'll, I want them to have to, because that will focus them in. It goes back to, um, you know, we're, we're getting them to focus. You really want to get them to listen to what you're saying. Because, again, they're thinking 18 things, and I just missed the last shot, and blah, blah, yeah. blah. So, you, so if they know that they might get called on, they'll focus more. <laughs> it's a classroom strategy, but it works. I like that, because we often will do scrimmages and – at the end of practice, we might have them run for four or five minutes and then stop to sort of simulate that timeout. Right. Like playing hot intensely until a timeout. So yep. I could do that. Uh, and that, that makes sense because they're practicing, so I, I should practice too. Yep. That, I mean, that's the way you have to look at it too, like with special situations and all that kind of stuff. I mean, as I get older too, it's hard to remember all the stuff. So I, I, I need practice just like they need practice. Yeah. Um, and same thing with the timeout. Okay. Now, this ne these next two bullet points are probably the hard the thing that I find the hardest and I really would love to master, which is I can just get a little bit lost in the game. And I it's easy to call a timeout and I can say, right, we need to box out more or, or right. you're not, or do, we need to stop penetration. There's so many things to watch. I'd love to know your thoughts on that. Yes, what, so you're not a base. You, so I coached my son when he was playing Little League when he was baseball when he was growing up. And it's mm -hmm. like you have all this time between pitches and baseball. Um, right. Basketball is like – I compare one to like the symphony and one to like a rock concert. Coaching basketball is like over – there's so many things going on. Yeah. So – and the object is you become, a, you become a spectator and you start watching and you're watching the ball and you're doing things you don't want the officials to do. Yes. So I force myself to watch off ball. Okay. Um, that's one way that I get myself to focus on what's going on in the game a little bit. Yeah. Um, I also, I don't think I have it here with me. Um, I also have a little black bind, little, oh, I don't have it. Um, it's in my backpack. It's in the room. But anyway, I have a little black binder that's about this big and mm -hmm. I write things down during the game. Um, okay. sometimes I have an assistant do it. It's a, just a little thing that sits in my, in the black, in the back of my, um, oh, I've lost you. Oh. You lost me because I'm yelling at my son. Hold on one second. <laughs> um, sorry, I had I'm yelling at my son. I didn't want to yell and oh, ruin your hearing for the rest of your life. Um, so he's gonna grab it for me. But anyway, it's a little thing that I carry around, and the boys are always teasing because they want to know it's like my little black book, but they always want to know what's in the little black book. But anyway, yeah. it's it's stuff that I'm always writing down. Yeah. I'm writing down about my teaching. I'm writing down stuff about teach hoops. I'm writing stuff down about my team. But during a game, I'm writing stuff down. Yeah, it's fine. I have two of them. He didn't know which one to grab. So it's literally this big. 
and you oh, know nice. I bought it for like six bucks on Amazon or something and it's just a little bind little thing and it folds and you can see here's my hand how small it is yeah and I'm okay. literally there's a pen I stick a pen and I'm all that refocuses me like hey I need to remember this I need to remember this so it's kind of that like get out of the game mode get into the coaching mode okay something that's worked for me but you kind of that and try and forcing myself to watch off ball refocuses otherwise you become a fan and you're just watching too many things um so you got to play around with that during practice too um like what can refocus you on what you need to do like this is my old one and this is my new one so this one oh, nice. um but anyway um and that then gives uh, that gives you material for the timeouts and it does, well it gives me material for the timeout it gives me material for halftime it also gives me you know, it's my ret- it's my retro. Like I'll go back and look. I will label it, and I'll go back and look and go, "Oh crud, we weren't doing that," or, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. Um, are you watching defense, individual matchups, offense, body language? Um, yeah, well, I personally, <laughs> um, when we're on offense, I'm watching defense. When we're on defense, I'm watching their offense. To be honest, I try to watch opposite of what we're doing. Um, so you watch the opponent's defense. I do. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm watching our stuff, but if, if you're not running our offense, then you're probably not on the floor. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So, but I'm also dealing with higher end kids. I'm older kids. So it's, it's a little bit different. Um, so what I have found the way that, especially young, early in my career that I was able to deal with this is <laughs> I, I, and it's the reason I don't go to our like university games anymore because I'm not really watching the game. I'm watching stuff because I trained myself to do that. So it's really hard for me to sit down and watch a game. You can't Um, enjoy the NBA. Enjoy it. It really is. I, once our season is over and the NCAA or the the college in the U S starts, I can do it because I'm done with my season and then I can kind of shift. But if I'm what I'm either watching tape, I'm watching something like I'm watching your game. I'm not really watching the game. I'm watching everybody. That's why I'm yelling stuff at you when we're, when we're doing it. So I don't really watch games anymore because I've trained myself not to, but it took a while to get to that point, but I did it by watching games on TV and the NBA and all that kind of stuff. And I really wasn't watching, you know, I've got, I don't even watch Wesley anymore for the man. I don't watch him anymore because it's like, I'm not really watching the, well him. I'm watching all the stuff that's going on. So that's what I, that's what I aspire to. So if I can yeah. Get to- and it's hard. That's really, really hard. Yeah. And I miss that when I retire, it's going to be, a, it will be a stretch, but um, I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to switch it, but, but you can train yourself to do that. And that's a great off season thing. Cause you can always find games on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's my 2019 goal is to not enjoy basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I enjoy it. It's just, I just don't watch it the same way. You know, yeah. I just, I don't, I mean, it's, it's, and my son's a junior on this year's team too. So it's a little different because I'm kind of watching it from a different perspective, but it, I, I keep pulling myself back. Like, Ooh, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, um, so then what's the next one? Uh, oh God, rotating 12 players in 40 minutes. Yeah. I mean, that you've seen this, you've seen a little glimpse of the standard and, it, it gets even worse, you know, like 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep. Where it just becomes kids who are active, fit, and, and, and like to play. And are you, you're trying to play everybody because it's more recreational? Uh, well, it's not. It's, it's competitive. I mean, this is the National League, and I can't – I don't play everyone equally, uh, but I do play everyone. If, if, I, if they come to a game, they will all get on the court. Um, and their parents are all opposite, you'll see. And it's just, right. like, difficult. Because you get, you know, it's my first season coaching at this level. Uh, and, you know, I'll get comments from parents. And they're, they're quite positive towards me. But, you know, you just get these, you just know they're watching every minute that their son sits on the bench. And so it's difficult. Yes. So, <laughs> um, so you, can't, you can't be rational with an irrational person. That's the first yeah. thing. Parents aren't rational. They love their kids. So... You, you have to do what you think's best. That's the first thing. So don't, you, your skin will get thicker. Trust me, as you get older, it will get thicker. Yeah. Um, but and it's a good thing. I mean, it's, it's something I fought early on because you, you don't do this because you don't love kids and you want them all to be successful. But mm-hmm. you run a talented and gifted program for basketball players. Just remember that. 
Um, so especially with 12, 11, 10, mm-hmm. I would try to, I would try to put four of your top group in with them. <laughs> um, if you're trying to get them some reps, if you're trying to get them a couple minutes, um, and I always use the analogy, if you put LeBron, James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, and, you know, Wesley on the court, I could go out on that court with the four of them and look okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard you're a baller, so that's, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> the old days I could play. Um, I could shoot for sure. Uh, but anyway, so that's – so in a 40-minute game, that's the way, especially with those bottom three, 12, yeah. 11, 10, um, I would try to get them in with – your top four or five. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, that, that would be the first thing. Um, and then the, um, the next thing would be, uh, you know, the losing thing is going to take care of itself, but you got to think about the game as one of the, one of the key points, the beginning of the first half, the second end of the first half, beginning of the, of the second half and the end of the second half. So those are the points where you need your top guys in there. Could you repeat um, that? Could you, could you repeat that? Yeah, hold on one second. Beginning. Uh, I was freaking out because I was at like eight percent on my computer, so I got it taken care of. Okay. Um, I said you want your core group, your top six or seven, at the beginning of the game, the end of the first half the beginning of the second half and the end of the game. Those are the, those, those bookmarks you, you know, and you might, so those other kids, those other five, so let's say your top seven have to be in those minutes. Your other five have to go in, in the middle of the first half in the middle of the second half. Okay. That's good. Cause I've, I've left players. I forgot about players and had to bring them in on the fourth, but I don't want them on. Yep. Is- yep. And that's where this is. Th- that's where this can come in. Cause you can write it down. Like Johnny got in, you know, right. you can, you can, you can, you can, you can even like write them in before the game and go, okay, this kid got in this kid. So you can kind of, it's a, it's a self reminder to yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's just, uh, th- this is helpful. Yeah. There's just so many things to watch. I'm trying to, I, I like the idea that you watch the opposite of the, you know, like the defense. And it, that, well, that, it's going to feel really weird. Go grab a game tomorrow and do it. It will feel really weird. Yeah, okay, I might just do it tonight. Oh, no, it's quite late. Yeah, I might do it. Because <laughs> obviously for, for us Brits, the NBA is on from midnight till 4 a.m. Oh, God, I never thought of that. So for the fans of basketball in our country, we don't get a lot of sleep. Oh, yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't, know why, I don't even watch a lot in California at Lakers. and st- I mean, yeah. Right. Mostly East Coast and Central is where most of the, you know, most of the, everything's kind of built around Central and Eastern, but. Right, right. Uh, and we've already gone over these other points, but the last one is just, yeah, we, we were two from 13 from the free throw line in uh, December in a game. And it's just like. That's a tough one. I put up a, I put on teach, I put on our Facebook group today a drill I did with um, free throws. It was kind of interesting. You should watch it. Um, and it was just a fun little game. It's like literally like it's, it's the way my brain works. It's just like, oh, let's try this and see if it works. And the boys seem to like it. But you always want to make free throws and practice competitive. And you always want to do it somehow in game situations if you can. Um, so, you know, like I did the little drill that you, you'll see on face, on our, in our Facebook group. I did that today. And then no one left the gym until they made four in a row. Um, now, I, that's, that's been up to eight or nine in a row. If I know I don't have to go home <laughs> um, because there's always one or two kids that are going to be there for 45 minutes. Like they're not going to make, they're going to get to six and they're going to miss. Um, but you can kind of gauge that how much time you have, blah, 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 things like that. But free throws is a weird thing. Cause it's so mental from someone that shot free throws really well. It's such a mental world. Right. Um, I mean, I was reading about Deandre Jordan and Carl Malone. And the way they both have adjusted their free throws through me- like mental habits and change of footwork and yeah, so it was because uh, I think it's like Carl- not buying the food and not if you you won't eat the potato chips if it's not in the house. It's like it's it's a mental game you play with yourself. It's the same thing with free throws. You got to get this mental game going. Right. It's the easiest shot in basketball. I tell my boys that all the time. 
it's the easiest shot in basketball because it doesn't change. The free throw in Madison, Wisconsin is the same as the free throw in Great Britain. It's the same distance. It's the same height with the same ball. It never changes. It's not like a layup. Layups mm. change because you have a defender or, you know, somebody bumps you or that kind of stuff. Free throws never change. They're the same for Steph Curry as they are for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, they just they go in less in Great Britain. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, I've also, t- uh, I know I've taken a lot of your time, sorry. No worries. Uh, your practice format, I've written down, you mentioned uh, five minutes, dynamic movement, skill work, shooting, dribbling, passing, one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three, five-on-five, then maybe press breaks, presses, and plays. And then you said you'd always end with a competitive drill or a game or something. Yep, and then you can always show the competitive stuff in, too. And, and what I always tell, especially coaches that are starting, it, it's similar to teaching from someone that's taught a long time. Here's my lesson plan, but the lesson plan changes. You know, right. I'm a whole Madeline Hunter. You got to monitor and adjust your group. So I don't stay with something. If it's not working, I dump it and leave it. I never stay with something because it's not working, but I'm also reading my group. Like we just came off, we just came off Christmas break. We had a couple of great practices and then we had kind of a dudder. Well, the dud, I had to adjust on the fly. I had this great practice plan, but a right. third of it got thrown out because they were probably up late watching NBA and didn't go to bed and then had to come in and practice. So, okay. um, you know, the, the plans are great, but you kind of got to, especially 14-year-old, 14, 15, 14, 15 year olds who knows, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But that's why, yes, I think, I think having that good basis is good and then kind of always have stuff in your – in the back pocket like today we need to today we need to maybe play a little bit more or maybe we need to you know always have something competitive fun because they are 14 and 15 year olds they're no different than the ones in the u.s they want to have fun they want to be competitive they want to play they want to play games so you always got to have that stuff like things aren't going well let's try that that might get them refocused um yeah well tonight i had a, a really clear practice plan and we got to the school and there's been miscommunication and it was locked and the lights were off and we had to cancel practice. <laughs> I'm telling you, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> We've had w- the heat off. I mean, everything. Yeah. Right. And in, in England, you've got, you know, these sort of courts, you've got like schools and leisure centers and the facilities aren't near as good as America. So it's definitely... It's because you're not a soccer coach. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> The bane of our life in England is are like badminton players and um, volleyball players because they're the ones stealing all the courts and they're using half a court. And, you know, it's right. really hard facilities in England and for kids to practice beyond their, their scheduled practices. It's hard for them to find good hoops. And you go to America, everyone's got a hoop in their you know, front yard. And oh, stuff. yeah. I got one in my backyard. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll take a picture of it and send it to you. It's, it's, it's yeah. under about six inches of snow right now, but it's in the backyard, yeah. It's snowing. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's snowing in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. We, uh, it's like, this is the great white north up here where we live. It's like, I was in Florida for a week on vacation, and I came back, and uh, I think it was 15 degrees and about four inches of snow I came home to. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's cold. Um, the last, so I know you've got to go. The last thing was just basically, there's so much information for me, and I'm, you know, you read online. I, I go to like, I know a professional team in England, the, the the London Lions. They're like the best team in this country. Yep. I've been to their practices, and you know they they do, you know they do like a two two one press, and, and I just, I'm going to America in uh, January at the end of this month. I'm going to go to the Nike Extravaganza, which is a high school tournament. Yep. And just because I know a friend over there, so I wanted to go and watch just the chasm. Where is that? Where is that? It's in uh, Mata Day School in Orange County. Oh, it's in, yep, yep, yep. Oh, that's the real deal. That's a good one. Yep. Okay. So I wanted to see the massive gulf of like the best, some of the best in the world. You know, I oh, guess that will be, it will be good. That major day, that's the real deal. They're, they're good. They're legit. They're, they're ranked consistently. That's a, that's a long, that's about 10 hour flight. Is that a direct flight? Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm basketball mad. Like I said, I'm obsessed. So, <laughs> I love it. my wife's letting me go. I'm going on my own with a friend. I'm just going to watch basketball. I'm going to some practices in high school. I'm going to take more notes and obviously hope to keep learning from yourself as well. I'm just trying to. Oh, that would be awesome. 
We'll, we'll, we'll get you over. We'll get you in the mid. We'll get you in the Midwest at some point too. We'll get yeah, you in here sometime. But yeah, thank you so much for right. the, No problem. The no problem. We'll talk again. And next time we'll do it on a Sunday, so we can. Usually I do, like I said, I usually do morning or early afternoon for people that are so far away. But um, yeah, we'll do that for sure. Thank you. And do you, what's the deal? Are you able to chat once a month or what's the whenever you, whenever you want? I mean, uh, we'll do office hours now that I'm kind of back. I'm, tr I'm, I'm working on the new site. So I, I'm about a week from feeling like that can go up and then um, we'll do office hours. So just watch the Facebook group and stuff for office hours. Okay, um, so that a group of us will get together. I'll just say, Hey, uh, Tuesday at seven and some of them might not work for you cause you're going to be in bed. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah so the, we'll make yeah and then you and i can get on one-on-one -on -one call whenever you want we can make that work it's just got to work it around my schedule and stuff so yeah. okay i really appreciate that and it's yeah. a real it's a real sort of honor to be connected yeah with you. high school coach so, and, and college coach so i really appreciate that no no problem talk to you okay. soon coach see you man have a good evening Bye. Hey coach, so happy you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe and like. Go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better.